This is the Dane Moore NBA podcast brought to you by Prize Picks coming at you. What is it? Wednesday morning. It's April 3rd after the Wolves win against the Rockets on Tuesday night. It was the latest game uh, the Wolves have won, fueled by that sort of quick decision making, ball movement style of play they're playing uh, offensively. Uh, that's the identity of this Wolves team, I, I think, or at least when they're winning uh, since since Cat has been hurt, it, obviously, in addition to their, their elite defense. And I think that's what I want to sort of focus on today. We're getting to a pretty extended size sample of what this team has looked like um, without Cat. And I think, um, yeah, we it's not things we're like, eh, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. You kind of are getting an idea of how they play, what it looks like without Cat. I have a... Uh, Wolves beat writer Jace Frederick from the Pioneer Press here with me to get into that today. Jace, how you doing? Hey, good man. And like what it is, like I, frankly, in my mind, like it's beautiful basketball. Like I, I really do think that. Like, and and listening to every all the players talk about it, like they love, they it. love it. They <laughs> love it. They love playing this style of basketball, and it's awesome. And the numbers bear out that it's awesome. Like, it's been really good. Um, and and this is, I think. This is what they've always wanted to play. This is what they've talked about for years. Like, this is what Chris Finch has talked about since he got here. Like, mm-hmm. people are like, why don't you run plays? Why don't you do this? Blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I don't yeah, think we need hand to. Raised, hand yeah, raised. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then you just see guys out there who are all committed to like, yeah, this is how we all want to play. And it's like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I don't I don't know if you want to dive into the numbers right now. Uh, yeah, but I, I pulled a few. So, like, last 10 games, So, which I think is a fair – segment anyway and that cuts out those first three games that they played without cat uh indiana at, at indiana at cleveland uh, at the lakers where you didn't have rudy yep. um and it's kind of an adjustment period right like you lose a guy like cat who like so much of your team is based around and there there is transition like the game that they won against indiana was just ant like being an ant uh and they hadn't found anything yet i don't think but in the 10 since then they are ninth in offensive rating Still fifth in defensive rating, and that's three games without Rudy in that span. So that tied fourth in net rating, ninth in turnover percentage, fourth in effective field goal percentage, seventh in true shooting percentage. And like those are, you know, wins in Denver at the Clippers, home against Cleveland, home last night against like the Red Hot Rockets, uh, home against the Warriors, who I thought played really well in that game at Target Center. Um, and then you like, and since, since March 11th, so that's that 10 game span. So, like, pre – when Cat was there, pre-Cat injury, the Wolves, 50.1% of their shots were open or wide open per the NBA's, like, tracking data. Okay. And in the last 10, 57.1% mm. of their shots are open or wide open. So, like, they're just getting better looks, and that bears yeah, out like in, that. like, the eye test. Uh, like, the everything looks easier, and it's coming out of good offense. Uh, even, like, what impresses me so much is, like, it's even when it – like, he can't hit a jumper right now. Like, the last six games – Shooting percentages are terrible. He's missed 22 straight threes. In that time, they faced three top 10 defenses, Houston, Cleveland, Denver. And that doesn't include the Warriors, who, like, Draymond's defensive rating this year is still 111, like a really good number. Right. Like, they haven't had in proportions, and they're not very but good. But when they do, out there. he's good. When, they're when good. they do, they're a good defense, yeah. So they haven't had Ant playing well. They played a lot of good defenses in these last six games. Still 14th in offense in that span. Like it, it's just like it just shows like it doesn't matter. Like Ant cannot play well. They can play against good teams. It doesn't matter. Like the mm-hmm. way that they are playing right now, the way they're sharing the ball, they're moving. Like it's even last night against Houston. Like after the rough first quarter, like eventually they just kind of broke Houston down uh, because good offense, good offense, good offense. Like you just can't keep up. Um, like the way that we see like teams can't keep up with them defensively. The way, that's kind of the way they're playing offensively right now. Like they just wear you down with. Ball movement, ball movement, body movement, body movement. Eventually, like you can't make all the rotations. Eventually, you can't account for everybody. Um, and that's that's it's just I think like this has been some of the most joyous basketball they've played. Like, and they've been really good all year. They've been a great mm-hmm. team, but they've been mostly like a like a pound you down to nothing. Like we're just going right. to you know like even like reduce you to rubble like by mm-hmm. squeezing you to death. Now it's just like both ends of the court are really like synchronized, and the offense has just been like wow, that was a great possession. Even against Chicago, it was like. Great look, missed it. Great look, missed it. Great look, missed it. Like, I don't know. I just think this has been tremendous basketball. I can't say enough about it. Well, the the best part about it is that it works even if your best players aren't working. Right. You know, and and that's what you you saw last night. Really, over kind of these last five games, uh, that Ant has been sort of really really struggling. Obviously, no Carl. I thought this was a really good question by you to Finch and and the answer as well, which is kind of just. 
encapsulates all of this. Like, this is what you were going for uh, all along. Uh, here's here's Jason Finch. And can't seem to hit a jumper right now. Carl obviously out, and yet you know, the offense really didn't have many issues against one of the better defenses. Is that kind of the whole idea behind you know moving the ball, making quick decisions, and good offense will follow no matter who's out there? Yeah, I think that. I mean, to me, that's the idea of the game of basketball on the offensive end. You know, just kind of share it, move it, find the open guy, particularly when you know you're playing switch heavy defenses because the number one intent is for them to just bait you into slow uh, ISO basketball and load up in the paint. Um, and you know we got we didn't fall for that after the first quarter. I thought we did a good job of you know playing quicker. Um, but yeah, no doubt about it. It's, you know that's kind of the, to me the essence of the game. So. so Jace, they when when he says that and it was the he said after the first quarter, right? I think that's something this team for sure wouldn't have done last year, right? It was the they're playing Houston, really good defensive team, really cared about that game, really into the ball in, in the first quarter, switching everything. And it was that, all right, it, it bogs down into isolation. And then you're kind of like flipping the coin that isn't even really 50-50 of like, can Ant just break this in isolation himself? Sometimes he can, probably majority of the time he can't against uh, a good defense. And they do, they, they, they fall behind. Or they don't, I should say. They don't figure it out. They, they fall behind uh, in the first quarter, but they have this other gear to go to, or maybe it's their best gear, you know, in general, uh, but of just ball movement, we're going to play through this and kind of, it. I do think it is the offensive version of like squeezing, you know, or like we're, if we just play this way over the course of the majority of the game, the offense is going to figure itself out. We have enough talent. We have enough smart players, high IQ players, particularly, you know, in these lineups that I don't know, like almost half the rotation right now is guys who consider themselves point guards. If they allow themselves to get to it and actually even Ant, you know, like Ant didn't play well, but he allowed them to start playing that way. I mean, we could talk about Ant a little bit later. I think, you know, he's clearly tired. He's not getting to the basket as much, but I think even in Ant's head, he's going, all right, I don't have it. There are there is another option other than me now. And and back to when you're talking about the Indiana and Cleveland games, there wasn't really another option. And Ant had to do it. And and he did. And I think he kind of, given how hard he played that first week, kind of redlined a little bit and we're paying for it right now and in some fatigue. But I think he is like, all right, this works, particularly once Nas, I think, is elevated into the starting lineup. Um, he's like, when we play through Nas, we can play faster. We can we can do those things too. So it's not that it's not Ant one A and Cat one B. It's Ant one A and ball movement and as Finch called it, the essence of basketball one uh, B. And that that is working. I think that's what we're both getting at is what is just fun to watch as you know, it's just as people who like enjoy watching good basketball. Yeah, and like two ants credit, he did probably like try to be a little bit aggressive last night. I think he tried to get himself like. You know, the Wolves, I think, had a few actions for him. And I think Ant just, you know, like, you know, has been struggling a little bit. Try to get yourself going. And, mm -hmm. and when that didn't happen early, like like you said, he was, I think he was very much like, okay, like, let's do this offense thing. You know, yeah. like, like, getting off of it and, and getting away from the action. And, like, I'll go over here. And if the ball comes to me, then I'll, I'll act from there. Like, so I think that shows a lot of maturity. I don't know, but maybe, like, uh, or whatever it is, he sees awareness, what's been working. Yeah, maybe, awareness. Yeah. That's it. That's the one. Uh, what He sees what's been working, um, and he is very happy right now, I think, to just be a part of it. Um, mm -hmm. Even, like, in the fourth quarter, like, those threes he was taking, they were within the offense. Yeah. Really, I thought. Like, the ones that he was missing, like, it was, like, balls coming to him, like, open three or, like, close out, shot fake, one step, shoot the three. Like, I thought they were fine looks. Like, his shot's just not falling right now. But I have no problem with, like, the decisions he's making in general. Like, yeah, early, maybe a little bit. Like, but I think mm -hmm. they even were trying to get him going. Um, well, and then it was the first quarter was that it's a switching defense. Yeah. Like, and, and, and a good switching defense. Right. It, it dares Ant into playing that way. And if he's not in supernova mode, it's going to be like, what did he start the game? Like, 0 for 6? And they were all, like, mid-range or step back contested sort of right. threes like the exact shots that not that you never want him to take but like you know it's not going to be in the aggregate his more effective offensive plays yeah i think the thing with like when ant talks about yeah we can play fast through nas like i think that's 
what's been so great is that they've established this ball movement right now. And Nas is the type of like top offensive player who can just take advantage when that movement comes to him. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like, Hey, let's run this great offense. And if the end point is then Nas playing off the catch, whether that be shooting, driving or whatever, like that's our best play right now. Mm-hmm. So like it, it, they're synchronizing so well, them finding this brand of basketball and Nas getting a bigger workload. Like I, I, I think the two kind of coincide with one another. Like totally. it's, it's, it's one is feeding into the other perfectly. Um, and we've seen a lot of other guys shining in this play as well, but like, Nas, it's just like, hey, we moved it, we moved it, we moved it. Nas is like, oh, I have some airspace here on a, for a three. I'm going to pull it. Or like, I'm attacking here. Um, and and there are even times like where he attacked, attacked for two buckets and then kicked out for a JMAC three. So like, he's making the right decision all the time as well. Um, mm-hmm. He's he's very much a huge cog in like why this is working because he is somebody who is very comfortable finishing um, finishing the action with like a, a good offensive play. Um, and, and he also thrives off of this basketball as well. Like this is his well, best version when they're playing this way as well. He was like born in this type of basketball, like in right. the wolves, right. You know, the, right. the, the end of the rotation into the, into the second unit. I also think it's his like instinctual general style of play, even back to his you know rookie year. He always was the like, grab it, move and let's go sort of, sort of style but he's kind of again baked in this playing alongside jordan mclaughlin years back torian prince though that that sort of group that you know when ant was off the floor or honestly for a lot of the time Nas has been here carl's been hurt and so he's been on the floor in units that didn't have a primary guy you know maybe d maybe young ant but a lot of the times it's like random groups and for those groups to even when the wolves weren't good to compete offensively they had to play this way they had to be fast had to be decision making because there's limit there's limitations to Nas's game back then there's always been limitations to Jordan McLaughlin's game all of those guys and now as Nas's limitations go away as he's just gotten better and more mature as a player it's like oh that's that's becoming a guy who also has no adverse impact on on the four people uh, around him and that's just yeah that's just bolstering bolstering this whole thing and I think and I wrote down like J Mac and Kyle to to talk about it this but it's just because I've been talking about Nas so much he is as much a you know a, a part of this and and shifting the style with which this pl- team plays offensively since necessarily since this team uh lost lost cat I just think he is a huge huge part of it yeah, and we've talked about in the past, like Nas sometimes struggles when there isn't a point guard on the court, right? Like there were like now there's four. Sure. Yeah, right. Like <laughs> like early in the season, like Nas when he was he started off well and like got into a little bit of a rut, and it was like, well, he's playing with Shake Milton, and like Shake Milton's not really a point guard. Uh, you know, they don't really have they didn't have anybody who was like, let's get into some offense here. Now everybody's just getting into offense, and we've always kind of recognized that like Nas plays best off the catch. Like so, if the ball is flowing, like that is when Nas gets to make. That's when his quick decision making shines the most you know like nobody's stacked up against you or anything like and he is very good at reading where the advantage is or if the ball should just keep you know oscillating like Mm -hmm. he it's that is where he's at his best and so when he's playing with all these really good decision makers like he gets to do what he's best at every single time down the court and then Mm -hmm. there's a growing comfort there um it this offense only works when everyone on the court is willing to do the right thing and that isn't just like that isn't just a knock on ball stoppers. Like it's not just like Carl no. catch and hold and catch and hold. It's very much also like everybody has to be willing to shoot. Everybody has to be willing to attack a closeout. Like everybody yeah. has to be confident, willing uh, to do their part in it. And that's what they've achieved right now, which is really rare and probably why it's kind of would be hard for a lot of teams to do this. Um, but they're so deep right now and everybody's so confident and that every, all of that is breeding just good play. Right. Um, that this is working brilliantly um, because like, like we've said at various points in the season, like when shake was out there, when Kyle was not confident in his offense, like, guess what? Even if the ball moved, eventually it was going to stop with somebody. Cause Kyle's going to mm-hmm. catch it and be like, Oh, I don't know what I want to do with this right now. I'm not sure yeah. what I feel good about. Uh, nobody's having any like, even like momentary questioning of what to do next. Yeah. It, and it, even sometimes in this, what we're saying is great right now too. Like there's instances where it's bad too. And, and it's like, you see the the ball movement and the quick decision making dry up and of course it's it's honestly the possessions that go to the end of the shot clock you know yeah. and you're like oh they didn't do it that time you yeah. know 
and and it and it and it goes away completely into that and, and now we don't really need to do the the Carl thing in this. I think that's where Carl could help on like being an another end of possession guy. Like right now, this team, if they get into it, they hit no adversity offensively. You run your first action, second action. Here we go. Here's the attack to the basket. It's clean. That's good. But if a team blows it up and it gets to, you know, the end that that's seven seconds left uh, sort of possession, like time in the possession. And if Ant's not out there, Ant's not feeling it or, I mean, oftentimes that's Kyle. Like, here you go. Just like it is figure Kyle. It yeah. out, you know, yep. Yep. Um, I, I think, you know, I've trying to been doing the thing of like, you know, is this team just as good without cat? And so I've been trying to like find some ways in which for sure cat would help. Like, I, I think that that could work too. But my, my point is, is we could, you can just see over the course of a game right now, the majority of the time they're playing offensively this way, but and sometimes they aren't. And it is such a jarring difference because it's not really a group of a ton of super talented offensive scorer type players. I mean, Nas is, you know, it's Ant and Nas kind of that fit that. And it's kind of those two, you know, maybe Mike a little bit, if you can unlock him in, in two man game. But yeah, the, the, the bigger point is they're just, they're finding that more consistently when they do have those bad possessions or a couple in a row, it's like, okay, timeout back into we're running this action that inspires that you know I, I saw that in the the first quarter they ran finch calls a timeout and they run like one of their little horns things but it's with ant is on the ball rudy's at one of the elbows and mike conley is at one of the other elbows and i was like huh you know that's weird but it was just to get into an action like yeah just, finch just was like if we hit it right here to mike it's gonna go you know it's just gonna start the circle um, sort of spiraling. So I think they're doing a really good job of not only playing this way more, but recognizing the times over the course of 48 minutes when they aren't calling a timeout, running a play, calling a timeout, putting in different players that that they feel confident are going to get that back. There's not extended stretches where they stop playing with quick decision making um, and and ball movement. I think Kyle's the, the biggest part of that. I want to talk about him next, but let's grab our... Uh, our first break here. Uh, today's show is brought to you by Falling Knife uh, Brewing Company. Uh, there's obviously games this week. Uh, the They got the Raptors tonight, um, which is Wednesday, 7 o'clock game. You can go to Falling Knife to watch that. There's also trivia going on there. Uh, so I guess if you want to do Wolves and trivia, just know that trivia will also uh, be going on there. Then all, obviously uh, Friday night and Sunday night, they play the Suns and the Lakers. Falling Knife stays open late. Uh, for for those games. So if you want to, uh, you know, you're not going to be at Target Center or they're not going to be at Target Center. So you can go over there to check that out. Also, um, we're doing a live show there on April 19th that we want you guys to all uh, sort of pencil into your schedules there. It'd be kind of the six o'clock happy hour, seven o'clock. Uh, Britt, Kyle and I will, will do the show. We did this right before the playoffs um, last season as well. So just mark that down. The first playoff game is going to be April 20th or 21st. So we figured we'd lock in uh, April 19th there for that. That's Falling Knife Brewing Company, uh, Northeast Minneapolis. And then also just quickly, today's show is also brought to you by Prize Picks. And um, we, we've we been looking at Prize Picks and noticing, you know, that yesterday I was like, oh yeah, baseball season started. Uh, if you are a, a baseball fan, uh, you can check that out too. Obviously, we, we mostly talk about prize picks with the, the NBA, uh, but I was looking at it this morning. I was like, oh yeah, baseball. And they have like NFL season stuff. So as all, you're laughing, what are you laughing about? I'm just like, it was like yesterday and you're like, oh, baseball started. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I feel the same way. I only know like opening day. I'm like, oh, it's opening day. And then it's right back out of the mind. Like, uh, right. But it didn't even get into my mind last yeah. week because wasn't it Thursday? And that was when all the ownership stuff hit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yep. Normally I'd be like, I might turn a baseball game on. Yeah. I've not watched game. a baseball game yet. We're not, <laughs> not got there yet. Yeah. Uh, Looking forward to October though. Let yeah. You. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, check out, check out prize picks. Uh, plenty of, uh, I mean, the Wolves play again tonight uh, uh, against the Raptors. I think you can kind of think about that. All right. It's one of those teams that's bad. You know, how, how do the Wolves play against the team? Uh, that's bad. You don't know, pick your point total more or less than whatever stat it might be. It's just a it's a fun way to to play daily fantasy. Again, whether it's NBA, um, if you're watching baseball, you can throw uh, a prize picks lineup in there together too. And then I noticed 
Um, they have NFL season long stat things up there already. Stefan Diggs just traded. How about that? That was you see that before we before we started recording? No. Where's yeah. it going? Uh Houston. Okay. Yeah, wow. just like literally right before we hit <clears throat> record. And then but then there's another like I haven't been paying attention that Schefter tweets out the like Houston's offensive weapons, and it's like CJ Stroud, and then the next one's like Joe Mixon. I was like, oh, I Joe Mixon see that one. is out of Texans. So I was like, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm just not good at uh at paying attention to that stuff. So, anyways, pricepicks.com, price picks app, promo code Dane for a one hundred dollar sign up bonus. All right, Chase, let's talk about Kyle. Uh Kyle Anderson. He has been as big a part of this, I, I think, over the last whatever the, the, the 10 game sample that you were talking about. Um, actually, I'll play the I'll play the Finch quote first before I go into to some numbers, but I think Finch gets deserves some credit for sticking with Kyle. I asked him about this uh, after the game last night. You know, when uh, Kyle Anderson was struggling earlier in the season, you never wavered in your your confidence in him and whatever whatever the role might be. Yeah. Um, how, how have you seen that sort of pay off here over the last? I mean, tonight, but obviously over the last month or so. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I try to keep confidence in all of our players, um, but. More importantly, you know, he was our most important player last year in many ways. You know, he he he, he saved our season. He did anything we asked him to do. Um, so we know we had it in him. Um, you know, he's played mostly at the three this year, um, which has been an adjustment, you know, for many reasons. I mean, he's a, he's a basketball player, so he can play all over the floor. But, you know, I think the rhythm of the game for him was slightly different at times. Um, <coughs> that certainly had, you know, something to do with it. But, uh, you, know, he's, you know, I think since the trade deadline, you know, he breathed a sigh of relief uh, that he wasn't going anywhere. And, and, and thankfully, he, was, he hadn't and never, never had any plans to. So, uh, but it's seemingly at that point in time, everything's just been better and better for him. So it looks like the Kyle Vole. I love when people just rip huge coughs in the middle of press conferences. It's <laughs> it just like, I just hold that in. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know who that was. Press conferences are long. So, like, ah. if you have a cough in the beginning, it could be tough. Was that you? <laughs> no, it wasn't. No. But, you know, there's, like, a, oh, my throat's dry. Or if there's, yeah. like, an I have a legitimate cold and, like, no. I can't keep this in. I'm just giving whoever it was a break. It was yeah. not me. I, I don't know. Yeah, but probably. <laughs> I was like, that wasn't us on there. But, anyways. It was I not thought, either of us. Yes. Yeah. Um, I thought that was a, a, a cool answer uh, from Finch. I mean, he's. We've asked him about Kyle before. He's brought up the the trade deadline idea and just, I mean, if, if not, whatever. Like, Kyle wasn't playing well before yeah. then. He's on an expiring contract. It was only natural to, as we as we did for like a month ahead of the deadline, you're like, does this make sense to trade him or not? You probably have to include him if you're going to trade for a player that's over $10 million. Um, And if it's under $10 million, as they – opted going for for Monte Morris, then it could be Shake Milton and Troy Brown Jr. Um, but that was that was, I think, an open question. And Kyle just wasn't he just wasn't as as confident. I looked up some of the pre-deadline numbers. It's weird actually how similar just like his counting stats are and and percentages. Like I thought he would have been shooting better from two point range, uh pre-deadline versus post deadline. 50.2% from two pre-deadline 50.4 percent from two post wow. post deadline but that's also not it, it's when kyle is good the offense overall yeah. is good and i'd be more interested in like turnover percentage so i didn't do turnover but i just did like before before the deadline he was playing 22 minutes a night 1.2 turnovers per game post deadline 26 minutes a game one turnover per game. So the turnovers, I don't know, what does that be down like 20% if a little bit more than 20% if you did it by um per 36 minutes or whatever. So the turnovers are down and the assists are up. It was it was three assists per game pre-deadline, 5.3 uh, assists post-deadline, which difference. gets to the the real huge difference is they had a 106.9 offensive rating pre-deadline when Kyle was on the floor only of rotation players only J Max was worse and J Max was like not even really a rotation player uh back then now post deadline 
the offensive rating with Kyle on the floor is 118.6. And only J-Mac, Cat, and Na have uh, better offensive ratings there. So he went from just being, when he was on the floor, the Wolves were playing some of their worst offense as a team in terms of their effectiveness into it being, you know, one of the best afterwards. And then and then defensively, post-deadline, Kyle's defense was good, you know, in the first part too, but post-deadline only J-Mac has a better defensive rating as well. So Kyle, the the Kyle stuff, all that those little things that Finch is getting to there that, that saved their season, um, the old Kyle, that's what the old Kyle does is he he raises he raises the group um with high IQ. And the only times he doesn't is when he isn't confident and he is the place where where the record scratches. And that just hasn't been happening. Certainly didn't happen at all last night. I thought that was one of the best Kyle Anderson games I've certainly have this season, but maybe ever seen from Kyle. Yeah. Okay. So I just looked it up quick. Pre All-Star break, eleven percent turnover percentage for Kyle yeah. uh and post it's seven percent which huge. is pretty pretty huge difference yeah mm-hmm. uh, and and I think it does all come back to like you mentioned the record scratch it all comes to, back to him being decisive like he looks like he has a distinct plan when he has the ball it even looks like when he catches and he's like I'm attacking here and I'm gonna score here mm-hmm. like where before it was like so often like you mentioned those end of shot clock situations where sometimes he gets the ball now and it's like dude it's you uh, yeah <laughs> um it looked like he dreaded those moments so much uh, at the beginning of the year for the first three, four months of the season, like where he would get the ball and he would get to the rim even. And it was like, I guess I have to put this up, you know, like, <laughs> and, and so like shots that you were used to him making, like he was, uh, you know, that's why I'm surprised the two point percentage isn't higher uh, yeah. because it was so much there. It looked like a kind of a prayer. And now it's like, it's such a plan and he's attacking mm-hmm. um, and, and it's either attacking to, create for somebody else a lot of the times um or it is just to get his own bucket i i do think there's a lot too like the not playing as much three thing you know oh, like, sure. i mean yeah. um it's just like he is made to attack guys who are going to like give him a little bit of space or just can't like aren't quicker than him um <laughs> you know because like if you if you can be quick and aggressive on him and you can maybe get up into him you can bother him a little bit more um if he can just attack space um and get to his spots he's lethal uh so uh, he's he has even said like i think he said pretty yeah. recently like i'm a four you know like that's mm-hmm. my best position um which kind of complicates things for like off season and whatnot uh but well, what about just for what about for when when cat gets back because that's what i was uh, thinking about last night well I, everything's complicated when cat gets back. i know I but let, I, let's well, let, it, everything is complicated i don't want to do we'll, we'll do that whole episode i don't want like, to either weeks. but yeah. i'm just saying just the kyle part that's what i was thinking yeah. about last night is like how or can you get this Kyle when Cat is back? And I think it's can he play the three? Yeah. And that because, is a because uh, even you know, even like even if we just say like Nas is playing the three a lot, like it's what a it's which opponent is guarding you, and they would yeah. put their four on Nas, probably. Mm-hmm. It would it would require Nas being like showing such greatness off the bounds and teams scouting him frankly well enough to know like we probably need like just a long three on Nas, which is mm-hmm. probably what opponents should do yeah uh but i don't think they would do that i think they would put the three on kyle um yeah i, I think that's why the answer to me is i i would mess with the kyle at the three stuff once cat's back as little as possible still but so but how long do you do that i i think it's the not you play you play Nas at the three a lot but I, again like that's like okay. next to Cat and Rudy. Yeah, yeah, okay. So then when Kyle is in, it is in the alignment where he is more the four, where Cat's at the five, um, or you know, or Nas is at the five, something like that. Like I think part of getting this, whatever we're talking about right now, to sustain offensively is allowing yourself to get a little bit uncomfortable by playing all three of Rudy, Cat, and Nas together. And honestly, and this could just kind of like a side tangent, but I think that group needs to be able to play defense, not in zone sometimes. And when the three bigs have played together, it's just been in little stints um, over the course of time, but it's, it's been zone. So it's like, okay, whatever, that's cool. Like we can get through a game against the Rockets playing zone. Some you're probably not going to be able to do that for, for a whole play, you know, a lot in a playoff series. So I think it's like, whatever, how do you make the three bigs thing work more often I think is a is a part of keeping 
this all together uh, once Cat is back, at least through the through the Kyle part of it, because I think it gets I think it gets messy again if you go back to Kyle needing to be the corner spacer, um, because yeah, he is four of eleven post deadline from from three, but like <laughs> well, you know, there you go, problem solved. Yeah, yeah, problem solved. <laughs> I also like Kyle at the point, like Kyle at the point offensively, I think gives you, give you some fixes. Some of that stuff. They were doing that more before. Yeah. Cause uh, he did play hurt. well, even at post all break, even for that little stretch before Kyle got hurt, yep. like to, to mm-hmm. give some credit there. Like he was playing well, even did play well. Yeah, injury. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with you. It is just hard. Like I agree with your lineup construction idea, like tinkering with that. It's just like, it's hard when you try to get everybody minutes to then be like, there's going to be times where he's got to play at the three, you know, if everybody's going to get to their minute milestones, you know, it's, it's tough. And then it's like, well, you're playing a bunch of different identities basically um, within the same game when you're mixing those lineups too. Like it's, it's difficult to do. um, But Kyle, do you feel better about their ability to play different identities though? Hasn't that, I, 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 I definitely do. It's just hard to do sometimes within, like massive shifts within the same yeah, game. That's I think like, totally fair. It, they it did that last night. Be, they did. They did. Night. They did. It's just like it's it's just hard to be like okay. Now we're gonna put in our really heavy ball movement mm-hmm. uh, lineup, you know, and like and you guys are right. going to just start, you know, get it popping again. Um, they can do it. Like like they. I think as they grow more and more comfortable over time, like that shifting becomes a lot easier. Um, and I think that's something that we've seen as well. Uh, Kyle just clearly has become such a rhythm player that like mm-hmm. knocking him out of it uh, could be tough, you know, because yeah. like he, but when he is in rhythm, like the whole, like you mentioned the whole offense is in rhythm, like, and, and he's making great decisions. And like, he is that last person then that you're like, you're kind of like the sacrificial person of who do we not guard? Um, and he is clearly not an option to be that guy anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's he just like five. wants that now. Yeah, he does. Like, last he night is, it looked like he was like, okay. Like this is my matchup. I'm scoring here, mm-hmm. you know, like, or I'm creating, I'm getting to the bucket and created for somebody else. Like, and it's like this, you know, like mm-hmm. it's, it's split second decisions. Like he's, he just looks so much like the Kyle of last season right now uh, yeah. in all the best ways. And pro- frankly, the Kyle who he's been for years um, mm-hmm. that it, you do want to get creative and think of any way you can keep this rolling because you do not want it to slip anywhere near uh, what it was at the beginning of the season when, when life was tough. Um, yeah. But, yeah, major credit to him also. Just of like, it just sounds like he was he was he understood he wasn't playing well, and he's like, I got to get myself out of this, like, and I want to just be playing well at the end of the season. And he's not even talking too much of like, here's what I'm doing differently now. Like he's like, I'm just building, you know, yeah. like, and it's a very much a veteran approach of like, yeah, I didn't play well, I'm playing better now. I'm gonna keep trying to keep playing better from here and help the team win. Yeah, I, I don't know. This crossed my mind. Like, that's what Jalen Noel never got to last year he kind of he struggled at the beginning of the season and never got back into the rhythm of good Jalen Noel which we right. had seen actually the the previous year but the role was a little different right like Noel had to last year had to play point guard and the first three years or whatever of his career it had all been kind of like the two off guard it's I think it's kind of a similar thing and maybe that is just being more of a veteran with Kyle he didn't lose his head in the way that Jalen did you know and you know, again, Kyle's 31, I think right. Jalen Noel 22, 23 or whatever um, last year. But that's hard. That I think the, the more common thing is like you have a rough, rough 30 first 30 games of the season, and the season just kind of gets lost for for a lot of players, particularly of that sort of like $10 million or less type of player. It I feel like it's kind of rare to have a bad start to the season and to get it back. And and part of it is a coach empowering that. That's why I think that's, this is huge. All of us, all of us were like, and everyone on Twitter was like, get him out of there, Finch. And like, what are you doing? Finch? You're continuing. You're continuing to go to that. If Kyle Anderson ends up playing an important and winning role in a playoff series, whenever it comes up, I think it's a huge credit to Finch for, not wavering in in that belief of Anderson because I think almost all of us did waver and we're like okay maybe we need to couch this a little bit and they didn't I, I think huge credit to Finch there too yeah and I think it does it does kind of come back to like having built up the trust like Finch mm-hmm. just reverted back to last season he's like well he saved us last season you know like I have a full season of evidence of like what Kyle yeah. can bring to a good team you know and and Kyle even in his struggles has a full career of knowing like I'm a good player 
You right. know, like I will figure this out. I'm not playing well right now. I'll figure it out. Jalen Noel didn't have that. You know, like there's right. just no like I don't know. You know, and you see mentioned with Jalen playing point guard, Kyle playing like more in the corner, like uh, playing the three. Like you just see like yes, there's the whole basketball player positionless blah, blah, blah. Like, and I agreed with that to a large extent, but like when you are asked to do different things, like there often is an adjustment. And that's what makes like what Nas can do so impressive is like, do this now do this. And now we need mm-hmm. you over here. And he handles it seamlessly. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard to have to be asked to do different things on, you know, like season to season. Um, and you see so many different guys struggle with that as their role fluctuates. And here's what we want you to Carl's do. Carl's a good example of, of that. These. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Like that, you know, yeah. like that is a different role. And that's why it's like, gonna be hard for carl too when he comes back because as it it's i think it's only harder the higher level of player you are usage level of player you are to be like actually play a different way like it's hard for every player um but maybe that is part of the advantage of playing most of your career as a bench player like Nas and kyle and j mac have that it's like you learn how to out of survival almost Mm -hmm. you know kind of amalgamate to whatever the whatever the role is and yeah they those those three have have certainly been doing this should we get into ant a little bit sure um what is it this is last 23 threes 22 threes i think it's 22 something like that um that's yeah just, whatever <laughs> 23 that's a, 23 that's, I, saw, that's I was a lot. just i just randomly had like sports center on this morning as i was writing something and like they mentioned his last three like offers or whatever and they said it was like the first time in nba history that somebody's missed that many threes without a make in three games or something wow. which is possible that makes sense like i don't know i don't really trust espn graphics much this it wasn't a graphic they just said it it was literally just part of like the yeah. script as they went through the timberwolves highlights and i was like oh, oh wow huh. like but it makes sense um and it it's it is like wow that's that's a lot but I, yet i still <laughs> i still like maybe it's because they're winning and maybe it's because i just don't mind the decisions he's making or like the mm-hmm. threes that he's taking it's just like eh, you know like yeah. it really does just feel like that right now well you and I were talking about this in the locker room last night where it's like, well, you, you said that to me and you're like, I didn't really mind it that, that much. And I was like, yeah, well, it was kind of costly. I mean, he's missing all those, but, yeah. then, but then what I said was like, he does still have that game breaker ability um, to, to have those big dunks at the end of the game to, to kind of finish them. Even, you know, a couple of them were open. It was fast break. It was a turnover or whatever, but there is something to ant, going down and dunking and yeah. then dunking again and doing it at home, not just for the fans, but for himself. And it just, I mean, that, that sealed the game. I mean, I was doing the kind of I, I, d- dumb thing in my head of in that fourth quarter, it was so off. And I was like, you know, and I wouldn't mind if they didn't close this game with him. I was thinking that at like the five minute mark or whatever, just because he was so clearly off, but then he has that attack down the middle of the lane. And that was the big one. Like, you're like, oh one. yeah, <laughs> this is why you don't, you, there's, you're playing him here through it all because he, he can do that, that nobody, you know, nobody else can do. Um, I don't know. He's a good shooter. So it's, if he has gone over for three games and missed 22 in a row, like he, he's not like a questionable shooter at all. Ant is a good shooter. Yes. You know, yep. 1000%. And we we are at, we are, we have long Way ago left that. the Georgia, whatever, all that sort of thing. Ant's a good shooter. So it's, it's going to come back and I don't want to do the, I mean, Chris and I spent way too much time on fatigue and all that stuff yesterday uh, or two days ago, but that, you know, that's, that's probably the biggest factor here. I think teams keying on him, like, what I thought was, was was sort of interesting was Houston was switching five the whole time, right? Because they're yep. small. I mean, not the whole time, but certainly when they didn't have a center out there, and even when they did, they were switching five a lot, which Ant's susceptible to, that that dares him into isolation. I thought it was interesting. I like, don't really see this that often in the NBA where they were switching five, but also when it was Ant putting two on the ball. Yeah. You know, that's like a confusing sort of right. Really scramble. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really have my head wrapped around it at yeah. all. But to that end, the 22 year old kid, you know, he's like, what? You know, like th- this possession was just a switch. And I got here. I am isolated on Jabari Smith. And now it's like, OK, going to get the switch onto Jabari Smith. But now Dylan Brooks is there, too. I don't know, like a putting two on the ball within a switching concept is a tricky thing. I think probably pretty breakable. But when you just throw that at him like they did in the first quarter, 
it's like, okay, I get it. You know, I get why he bogged down into isolation a little bit and was, you know, missing some mid range shot. You didn't like the, that shot selection, but I think it's fatigue. I think it's a cold shooting stretch. And it's like, here's another thing the team's throwing at you, you know? And, and there's this just like belief in it. And I have it too that like in the playoffs, he can just kind of raise up and overcome because he has the, the previous two years. He's going to be the primary focus this time and all the coverages and all the, they're going to go through all the, and everything to be like, how do we make this as murky for, for Ant as possible? And I still believe in his ability in the playoffs to be able to do that, but there might be a bad couple ant games in the playoffs and there hasn't really been in in the last two seasons and it will be because i think every opponent is just going to be dialed on on him and 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 figuring that out and so to that end maybe this stretch of 20 games or whatever without carl has given him more reps against that hyper focus on him uh i don't know just think about that too yeah, and and like that's why I think stretches like this are so important because like it's building up his trust in like okay I don't have to I don't have to score thirty five for yeah. us to win I don't have to score thirty five for us to beat good teams like I don't I I can not make a shot and we can still beat these teams if I if we just kind of keep doing the right things like this is like the prime thing of like success is breeds buy in you know like and he obviously is buying into like oh okay let's just I'll just get off it. You know, like, and then he's, he's celebrating when like Nas hits a three as much as anybody else is, you know, like, and he's knowing, I think he's seeing too, like his, like he blew by Dylan Brooks and had that big dunk last night. Like that was probably the least defensive attention Houston had on him all game. Cause there was no help once he beat Brooks and it part of it's because like rotated back to the second side. Yes. 100%. You know, like it's, it's ball rotates. It's it's coming back. It's you catching it. It's the second time you catch the ball, you know, like now things are so much more open for you. Mm -hmm. And like everybody else has established themselves as such a threat. You, they have no choice, but to put less focus on you. So like the more that everybody else builds up the confidence that, for him that he can trust them, that he can trust just them playing like this free flowing offense and that he doesn't have to do everything. The more likely it is that he will continue to carry it into the playoffs where like, mm-hmm. that would have been yep. my big thought heading into the playoffs is like, it might revert back to like pretty heavy ISO ball here because he's had success in the past and like in the playoffs, everybody kind of feels like I got to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think the more that they can play this great basketball and it can just be a part of the big success. And like, he's still the, biggest reason for it because everybody else is gaining advantages because he's on the court Um, Mm -hmm. that like that's that's like the biggest reason for having like a star player is like the attention they require creates advantages for everybody else Um, and that's working right now so I think it's pretty huge um, that he can just see the general success of it Um, and that's that's where I think like and and one other thing on Ant like I think he didn't talk last night. Like he didn't have like a night where he had to stand in front of us and say stuff. Like he got the night off in that respect, but he was in there and he was telling us some stuff. I think John tweeted out like one of the things he just said, like, but, and it kind of portrayed like he has no lost confidence. Um, yeah, don't yeah. worry about him missing a million threes and losing any confidence in it. Does not happen. Will not happen. Mm-hmm. It, the next shot and takes from three, he is very confident will go in. Yeah. Uh, so like, He's maintained confidence in himself. That will never waver. I just think the confidence that he has in everybody else continues to grow. I, I think that's a, a great point when you were saying that. I'm like, yeah, this is the most Ant has ever trusted his teammates in his career. And it's, I, again, I don't think it's because Cat's out. I think it's a progression over the course of this this season where he's just, I, I don't, I, he's seen, I think, them win without him. And like, that's what he needed to, to see and believe. Because I think, at previous times or like early, early in the season, right? Like when he wasn't playing well, they struggled to shift into something else, right? Like this other off. I mean, maybe it'd be Mike and Rudy two man game, but whatever you're running that like 12 times a game, you know, they didn't have another like primary way to play player to play through uh, consistently. So Ant would like, he'd start cold or he missed some shots and he'd be like, okay. Like, and he would back off for, five possessions or whatever, but then be like, I have to go again because I don't trust this around me right now. I think over these last few games, he's like, I'm not going right now. And I trust Kyle here. I trust Nas here. I, the way in which we're playing. And that's why I think 
that's what's allowing us to be like, he shot bad in that game. Like you said, but you're like, I didn't have a problem with how he's playing. You know, I didn't have a problem with the shots that he was taking and, and doing it in that sort of way. And that, that is a growth in Ant that I think somewhat ironically has come as a product of playing poorly himself, which is that that's a huge like <laughs> growth through bad play. I, I think, I think that is happening with Ant now at the same time, like get your body right. Yeah. Like, you know, you gotta, you gotta be really intentional about this. Um, and I'm not saying he isn't, but like, clearly his body is not like a hundred percent right now. So let's two weeks, right. Or whatever. Today's the third. So 18 days, 17, 18 days until your first playoff game. Like what is, what do you need to do for your body to get that back? Right. What do you need to do in the gym to get, you know, your shot back, not just confidently, but consistently, you know, and, and, and going in, I think there's, there's stuff he needs to do, but the faith and trust that he has in the players around him right now is not costing them in the meantime, as evidenced by the fact that they're, I guess Denver came back late. So they're, they're the one now, but the wolves are in this. The wolves are in this because Ant has played great sometimes. And at other times when he hasn't played great, he's trusted his teammates and they've, and they've picked that up. I, I think that's, uh, that's huge. I, I think I, I this tonight, the Raptors Seems like game. the most perfect. Yes, this Raptors game. The Raptors tanking about as hard as anybody. Um, it just seems like the perfect opportunity. I know the Wolves won't do it. They don't believe in it. Perfect opportunity to give a guy a night off. Like you play the yeah. Lakers on Friday, Phoenix on no, Sunday. Phoenix on Friday, Lakers on Phoenix Sunday. Phoenix Friday, Lakers Sunday. Okay. Road, road. Uh, road, road. Two very big games. Um, mm-hmm. So I think just in terms of like actually chasing the one seat, this is the best. This would be the best play. Second of a back to back. He does seem fatigued. Give him a night off. Let him have, you know, two days off yeah. um, before you play your next game. You will absolutely win tonight without Ant. Like they, mm-hmm. you, you are fifteen and a half point favorites right now. Fan doesn't play. You'll be thirteen and a half point favorites. Right. Like, I mean, I, everyone's playing so well. I just, I, I, I really think this would be a great opportunity to do it. I don't think they'll do it. I, I think this would make a lot of sense to do it this way. Ant, also, if he plays and it's a tanking team, He'll probably be checked out. A little bit. Yeah, man. You know, like and and so I I I, me and Chris kind of talked about this on on Monday and and I was like, it isn't even a rest game. Yeah, it wouldn't even be a rest game. He has injuries. Like, right. I I don't like I don't think he loses his like captain of the anti-load management card if he doesn't play tonight. He has a finger that's heavily wrapped every single night. Uh he had back spasms last week that almost kept him out. He's rolled his ankle like 15 times this year. Like it's, it's not just like fatigue. It's, I mean, maybe it's the, everyone's dealing with something at this time of the season, but he's clearly dealing with something. I mean, the kids was 22 or 23 threes in a row. Like, you know, something is, is going on here from a physical, uh, you know, standpoint as well. So I I'm, I'm with that a hundred percent. And also kind of believe it won't happen because it hasn't been it hasn't been what what this team has done but that that's good to to mention let's just hit on small ball quickly before we wrap um that's not been a problem this year playing against small teams has not been a problem for for the wolves um i mean situationally possessions here or there quarter here or there but obviously houston last night starts extremely small they got jabari smith I don't know, or Amon Thompson as their center and they're just trying to run and play fast and give up a ton of size uh, against Rudy and Nas uh, on the interior. And I, I just, it's happened pretty consistently over the course of the season. I think there's like only one time and didn't even cost them the game. There was that, that Clippers game at target center where they went small in the fourth and it got the Clippers back into the game and they almost came back and won it. But the Clippers have gone to that other times against the Wolves. The Wolves have squashed that. Uh, Brooklyn gave them some problems when they went s- smaller at times. But like no real, never real, like they got broke by small ball and at, at any point this season. And really it's it's almost turning into an advantage, I think, for, for the Wolves where you're like, okay, um, we are going to stay big and we think – this counter that you're throwing at us of going small is going to help you. We actually think it's going to, to help us. And obviously that's one of the biggest like Rudy things of like, Oh, you can play small and how's that going to impact him? Um, 
I, I'm having a lot of confidence going into the playoffs in this team's ability to play against small ball. Granted, in the playoffs, you're going to play against better small ball than the Houston Rockets when, when teams go to it. But do you like, are, are you afraid that the Wolves are going to struggle when it, when a team does click into that? No, I, I think if another team wants to like go to small ball as a way to score against Minnesota, like you better have five shooters. Like if you mm-hmm. do not have one, then that just becomes a guy that Rudy will leave um, and yeah. play in the middle. And now like, it's the broken. Can, yep. Yeah. The Wolves can match you defender for defender with Rudy there. And, and you're going to have to resort to a lot of your bad shooter in the corner, taking a lot of shots that you're like, mm-hmm. gee, I don't know. Hopefully he has a night uh, because other, it's not going to work. Like, yeah, Thompson got a few open threes in the corner last night, you know, I'm gonna, like, cool. You know, <laughs> right. like and that, that that's pretty much it. Like, and we've seen that with a number of teams, like, whether it's Westbrook for the Clippers or anybody, like if you do not have five shooters on the court, you have lost the advantage of doing that. Mm -hmm. Like Rudy has to guard a shooter. He has to be leaving a shooter in the corner Mm -hmm. um, for that to ever hurt Minnesota. Otherwise it's just like you're playing in our hands almost. And then offensively, I think Minnesota has done a great job of like Rudy's got a small on him. If he gets like the deepest, best possible position, like right in front of the rim, then feed him. Mm -hmm. If he does not just, Play your offense and drive to the bucket. They did that. Van Vliet was on Rudy a couple times, and they're like, yeah. eh, just keep moving it. Keep yeah, moving yeah. it. We'll because get back somebody, to it. If somebody else gets to the rim, like if you get to the rim, the other team does not have a rim protector there. Mm-hmm. And even if you take a contested shot at the rim, you see Mike do this all the time. Just throw it up on the rim. They yeah. have nobody to box out Rudy. Like mm-hmm. Rudy will get the rebound. Like Rudy is dominating the offensive glass against these small ball lineups more than anything else, which is easier for him to do when he's not the one taking the shot. Right. Like, you just can't I, give it to him zero times. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Like with that. you got to keep his head in, and, and and they have, but it yep. doesn't need to be every time. Yes, I and I do think too, though. Like Rudy is kind of feeding off his own offensive rebounds of like I'm getting the ball, you know, like yeah, right. and, and they are coming so <laughs> easily yeah. against these small ball things. And yeah, but it is. It's like picking your spots. It's like if Rudy is ten feet away from the hoop and he's got mm-hmm. a guy posted up, no, like yeah. don't because then they will swarm him and it, and it could be a turnover or a bad shot. Like and that's where it's like small ball kills the wolves like right. Rudy can't take advantage but if he is like right in front of the rim and he has moved mm-hmm. his guy all the way there and it's just going to be a dunk if he catches great yeah. and that i think they've done a really nice job picking the times in which it's like okay this makes a lot of sense this is going to be a layup uh we'll get it to him here or being like you know what? we'll just like you can get it off the glass like mike will literally drive in and just throw it up and mm-hmm. be like this might go in but otherwise Rudy will just get it i mean he's even said as much uh, yeah and and you see it play out it's like yeah if you break down the defense and throw it up there and they have literally nobody like who can even slightly contend with Rudy on the glass he's going to swallow up the right. rebound and get an easy put back and and it's not they're not a 10 out of 10 at this and, and navigating it but they were a one out of 10 uh, at it last year Went yeah I'm, Rudy under the basket yeah forcing yeah. it Rudy wasn't getting as deep you know, and then you end up getting into one of those weird lefty hook situations. Yeah, you don't want Rudy to have five post ups. Oh, you know, everything you know? chest. Rudy, if Rudy's shooting directly forward, dunk uh, like ahead of him, like at the basket, as soon as he has to like pivot his shoulders or do something like that, the percentage is going to drop drastically. And Rudy's doing a good job of being patient and getting to that. Mm-hmm. But you got to be, if you're Mike or your aunt or you're whoever, like, you got to be thinking about if I give it to Rudy right here, I can see it. Like I have the view of what Rudy is going to do here. And you know what Rudy's going to do in those situations. You've played with him enough now. Um, and I mean, sometimes they're giving it to Rudy in tough spot, but for the most part, it's like, here's a situation where Rudy, I know he can catch it, come through pump dunk, you know, like the basic stuff and hitting them in, in, in those positions. That's how you punish small ball, right? You make that not be an issue. And the only way, Like they're trying, this team going small is trying to make it an issue. And by feeding Rudy too much, they win. By feeding him the right amount, you win, like in a big way, you know. And I think they're they're getting into that more. And then just getting a little bit better against switching defenses, getting all all of those, all of those sort of things. They're 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 getting better at to the point where you're not going to be like, oh, this is going to be a really big, uh, really big problem in the first round. I did want to say one other thing on that. To back to the defensive side. The Rudy off of a shooter thing works better against Aaron Gordon and a four than it does the guard thing. Yeah. Uh, Like just been watching like Oklahoma city a lot and Giddy shooting better. And I, you know, think about that series. 
I'm not sure I would do Rudy on Giddy. Like it, it is. And, and Thompson, I think is the same way functions a little bit more as a guard. You're out in the perimeter, you're up in the high quad of the floor. You know, the best one is Gordon or a four who can't shoot because Gordon wants to play out of the dunker spot. Rudy's like, cool. I want to be yeah. here too. Like Gordon, if he's going to shoot, he's going to shoot it from the corner. And Rudy's like, that's all right. I can still be on the block here and like semi recover out to Gordon. Like, I just, that game sort of reminded me that it's not a guaranteed win if there's a non-shooter to put Rudy on. I think there's, I think there's just a sliding scale of that. And the Gordon one is, is the best when it's a four who can't shoot. If it's a, if it's a Giddy, it's a Thompson, it's a, I don't know, some of the other sort of wing dort, whatever, like, I don't think that's going to work as as well and I don't think it worked that well in the in the first half last night having him be on Thompson because it's just pulling Rudy out of the area in in which he wants to play I just wanted to mention that yeah I think that's fair um I still don't what is what would you prefer they do then I guess in those situations well I just okay see how would you prefer they match up instead is I I think you you might start with Giddy and get off of it quickly if he okay. if he hits some and and then just put him on Chet, you know, which I mean that's Oklahoma City is the toughest one because now Chet is going to be able to just pull him away from invert the you out yeah. to the out to the perimeter there. I I don't know. I mean, I'm just at the point of like Rudy by the rim beats everything. Like, how do you? But yeah, I'm, so, I'm kind of dodging your question. So that's, that's what I'm saying, though. I it, think they yeah. probably think that putting him on Giddy is the best way to do that. Like, mm-hmm. That then that that's maybe the distinction is like. If there is not a cent a, a player that you can put him yeah. on to be by the rim, then then move on to the giddy, the wing who quote unquote can't shoot. But if there is an opportunity in which like I, I think, you know, maybe if they play the Thunder, like Bismack Biombo might play some, you know, like sure, right. The, yeah, the, you know, and the, a no brainer. Yes, it's you. always yeah. Yeah. put him on the five if it's a five that's gonna sit by the basket. Yeah. Um, I'm just I don't know. In general, I think the best possible thing is to to have Rudy by the the rim as much as possible. But you're right. Different different matchups, you know, preclude that from happening. I think like last night they tried to keep him on Thompson even once Landale was in there. Like that's kind of what I'm talking about. Put him on Landale, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah I agree. That's with just that. that's that's going to that's going to keep him you know, by the by the rim in that situation. But generally speaking, the best thing for the wolves and how they can line up defensively is non-shooter at the four cat Nas or Kyle guarding the, the, the center at the five, which maybe might end up happening now with like Sacramento too, with Sabonis. We've always seen Rudy on him there. Um, I don't know. I just wanted to, I wanted to, to note that, but broadly feel a lot better. And that's just grown over the course of the season about how I feel about this team playing against small ball. And they've said, I mean, Mike said that as much last night too. I've kind of any team that's done that at all. I've asked Mike about it after the game and he's like eagerly like we're figuring this out. And yeah. and this is really important for the rest of the season and for the playoffs. And he, and he said that again last night. So they're, they're for sure moving in the right direction there. Yeah. hundred percent. I actually think to on the offensive end to Rudy's credit, it's not something you want to go to a lot um, like him, like, you know, mm-hmm. going to a various post moves and like working his way into like the left shoulder or whatever. But he has just done a better job, I think, of just putting the ball on the glass. Um, and so I think that has increased his finishing percentage on shots where you'd be like, this isn't going down. Yeah. Um, I think he's just done a better job of just, yeah, using the using the backboard, uh, which sounds like <laughs> great coaching. But I really do think he's just like done that more and they've gone down more. So like, if you can increase the likelihood of that shot from going in from 40% to 52% or whatever, like right. that's a pretty big difference. Because any yeah. miss around the rim, Leads to transition opportunities the other way. So, like, if he is going to do that, the higher percentage it makes is just a massive difference, not only offensively, but defensively. Yeah. Uh, Raptors up tonight. Uh, Big one. <laughs> really, honestly, perfect night for Falling Knife to also have trivia going. Yeah. Right. Perfect <laughs> game to have trivia on yeah. with the Wolves on and the And the second half, like, trivia starts a little bit afterwards, too. Like, yeah. watch the first quarter, see if they, they get the lead. And then, you know, once Wendell Moore is in there, like, it's a good some... game to just glance up at the TV as you're thinking of the answers. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the a... perfect setup. <laughs> oh, that's a that's a good point. Um, Britt and I are gonna do uh, an episode tomorrow morning after that that uh, that Raptors game, and uh, we'll yeah we'll keep we'll keep going from there. Jace, appreciate you doing it.
Always fun, man. Uh, yeah. So until uh, tomorrow with uh, with Britt, he's Jace. You can follow him on Twitter at Jace Frederick. Read him at, in the Pioneer Press. Uh, I'm Dane at Dane Moore MBA. Uh, yeah. Till tomorrow morning. Peace out. How I'm feeling, man. I hope it never stop. Yeah. Green and hot, so you can find me in the crowd. Yeah, yeah. Don't let standards ever ever bring you down.